Today we're going to talk about something called a for loop inside PHP and a for loop is a little bit different than a while loop which we did actually talk about in the past two episodes because in a while loop we don't know how many times we're going to loop something out but in a for loop we know exactly how many times we're going to loop something beforehand. So to give you guys an example of a for loop let's actually go ahead and write one out. I'm going to say for parentheses curly brackets. Now in a while loop inside the parentheses we're just going to put in a condition that needs to be true in order for it to keep looping something out. Now in a for loop, we're going to put three different parameters inside the parentheses, which are going to tell us how many times we need to loop something. So the first parameter we're going to put inside the parentheses is something called an initializing counter, which basically tells the loop where it needs to start. So inside the parentheses, we're going to put in the first parameter, which is going to be a variable. I'm going to go ahead and call this one X. You guys can call whatever you want. And we need to set it equal to something. Now I'm just going to put it equal to zero because that's just a typical habit to do when you do examples. And I'm going to go ahead and separate this one from the last parameters by a semicolon. So basically what we're saying is that, okay, we need to loop something and we need to start at zero. Now the next one is going to tell us when to stop looping. So inside the second parameter, we're going to go ahead and set variable X lesser than or equal to 10. So now we're saying, okay, we start at zero. And once you reach lesser than or equal to 10, then you need to stop looping. Because like we talked about in the past couple of episodes, if you have an infinite loop, you might end up crashing your browser. So we want to make sure that the loop actually stops at some point. So the last parameter we're going to put in here is basically what tells us or like tells the loop how many times you need to increase each time it loops something out. Now I'm going to go ahead and set this one as variable X plus plus which means that we just add one more each time we're done looping. We could also say plus three if you want to, but we're just gonna go ahead and use plus plus because that means incrementing by one. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and put an echo inside my actual loop in here. I'm gonna put it as, I'm gonna put it as a string. I'm gonna set it to high. Then I'm gonna add a break just so we can see it go to the next line. And I'm gonna end it off with a semicolon, of course. So after we put this in here, we can actually go to our browser, refresh, and you guys will see we get high, 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 high until we reach 10, I think. Let's see if we actually do have 10, we have five. We do actually have 11 because we did actually start at zero, meaning that it's gonna reach, you know, it's gonna count zero and then till 10, which is 11. So we did actually loop something out 11 times. We could change this to nine if we want to, to loop out 10 times, or we can just set a x equal to one if we want to loop out nine times. So as you guys can see, we get 10 loops, not, not nine, like I said. Um, so this is the basic idea behind a for loop, which allows for us to actually tell it beforehand how many times we want to loop something. Now, of course, x can always be changed by the user at some point, but the basic idea here is that we can, you know, provide these different statements in here where we decide how many times it needs to increase or what the limit is for this x. So if the user taps in x is equal to two, then two is of course gonna be you know, counting out less loops than one. So this is basically what I wanted to talk about in this episode. For the next episode, we're gonna talk about something called the for each loop. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.